The Bible tells you that you're the light of the world and also the salt. Have you ever realized how salt works? Have you ever realized? You see, you cannot use salt if it's in the box. And many people don't understand for you to be the salt of the world, you need to come out of the box. You need to say, I'm not going to be held in this position. I want to go and let the salt that is in me be seen. For example, I see so many people trying to uh, get, uh, like, uh, you, you want to get a job in a place where it's only Christian environment. Maybe you take your children to a Christian school, things like that. Have you ever asked yourself, if these children, you taught them the way of God, you taught them how to be the salt to the other children, how much impact is going to have and how much if you are in that evil kind of a job situation and you become the salt or the light of that job how is it going to be we're going to change so much but as christians we want to confine ourselves we, it's like we want to lock ourselves in some room and say we don't want contamination but what is the work of the salt the work of the salt is to make sure it is it changes the environment. The salt does not do any impact when it's in, it, 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 it's in a box. It doesn't do any impact. And uh, the only way that salt can affect the environment is simply being what it is in that uh, uh, position or that place where it's needed. For example, I want to give you a good example of how salt works. Think about a situation whereby you get to a party whereby or maybe to a house where uh, a couple of friends or a couple of people they're just speaking or doing something and uh, you are the one there who is speaking even if you're speaking one word or two words or you or you or you're just behaving differently and people will be able to look and say why is that person different from all of us we're doing wrong things we are doing whatever we want, but there's someone who is different. Think about situation, even when you, you, you meet up with the, with the police and they're there maybe uh, arguing with people and uh, you are different. Instead of arguing and uh, maybe accusing or, or telling them, you people, you're bad or you, you have done this and this and this, you tell them the word of God. You tell them, hey, this is what the Bible says. Even if you will be persecuted, even if things will go out in a different way, but you become the salt. The salt cannot work unless it's in the right place and in the right way. Because the Bible told us that uh, in uh, uh, Matthew 5.13 that you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? How shall it be seasoned? Then, then it, it's good for nothing. But it's to be thrown out and trampled by foot, eh? uh, underfoot by men. If you lose your saltness, how do you lose your saltness? Uh, you lose your saltness the moment that uh, you start becoming uh, just like any other person. Like for example, you, if, you, if you mix your salt with other perversions, you're losing your saltness. You're, you're, you're a Christian, but you're watering out your gospel so that you can fit in with the crowd. You're losing your saltness. You, sometimes you want to influence others by being like them. You're losing your saltness. You have to be different from them. You have to be someone different who, when he comes to a place, is like a light. When you enter somewhere, even those who are doing evil things, they will stop doing whatever they are doing and they will disperse and they'll say, oh, this guy has come. So now our meeting has to change. The protocols have to change. That's how you know you are the light or you're the salt of the world. Don't be adult. Uh, adulterated or do not conform to the patterns of this world because people are conforming to the patterns and that's where the problem is you lose your saltiness by conforming you want to go as per the rules of the land but you don't want to go as per the rules of god are you seeing how you lose your saltiness okay so you're not called to be credible but you're called to be different and that's why we as christians we're losing it because we want to be credible we want to be seen by the other people as if we are you know we don't want divisions 
And that's where the problem is. The Bible says, be ye holy for I am holy. What does the word holy mean? It means be separate. Be different from the people. That's how you can only have that salt in you or that light. Remember the Bible tells us that uh, uh, blessed are those who are persecuted because of me, because of righteousness. Okay, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Why did Jesus say this? Because people are ailing from sin. People are ailing from sin. And if you are the salt and you pour some salt on top of a wound, how is it going to be? There's going to be pain. There's going to be pain. So people, they are ailing. And when you pour some salt on top of them, they're going to shout and persecute you. And they say, we don't want to hear the message. We don't want to hear what you're telling us because we are sick in sin. And when you pour some salt on us, in an aspect to heal us, because if you pour some salt on a wound, what happens? That wound starts healing. But they don't want that because they are deep down in their sins. So they will persecute you. And the Bible tells us in Matthew 5.11, Blessed are you. Blessed are you when they insult and persecute you. Okay? And uh, falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad because great is your reward in heaven. For it is the same in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. They persecuted them. So don't worry about being the salt. Don't worry about being the light. Because the Bible says you should let your light shine. Do not hide your light. The problem with us as Christians nowadays, we are hiding our light. When you go somewhere, you never tell anyone that you're saved. You never do anything to show your light. You're hiding it so much because you don't want controversy. I don't want issues. I don't want issues. I just want to be cool. Come on. It's not like that. The Bible says... In the book of Matthew 5, 14 to 16, you're the light of the world. You are the light of the world. And a city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Are you doing exactly that? Are you letting your light shine? Or are you hiding yourself? Are you hiding yourself down there? When you go to your workplace, is your light shining? Are you becoming the salt? When you're walking, when you're in a bus, when you're, when you're doing whatever you have to do, are you becoming the light? Look at Jesus. Jesus never closed himself in a church and said, oh, my disciples, come here. Let's just close ourselves here because we don't want issues. No. Jesus mixed with the people. He mixed with sinners. He mixed with liars. He mixed with tax collectors. He mixed with the prostitutes. He mixed with everyone. And his light was shining. He, people were coming to, to him so that they can get that salt and get healed of their wounds of issues. Are you becoming that light or are you hiding yourself? The problem with churches nowadays, they, they just, you just want to, guys, let's, let's have our church here. Let's worship here in peace. We don't want issues. It's not about wanting issues. My friend, as a Christian, you have to love issues. You have to love to provoke people. I enjoy so much. Sometimes I just sit down and I and I ask Catholics different questions. Hey guys, why do you worship Mary? Why do you worship idols? I provoke them so that they can talk to me and I can tell them this is the truth. Because unless the, the, the salt, the salt is poured on a wound, there can never be healing. How, how do you expect to sit down? You, are, you know your friends, your, your relatives, your, your neighbors, they are not in the light and you and you don't want to tell them anything you my friends why are we saved why why were we not saved and then we go straight to heaven because god wanted us to be here so that we can be that light my friends if you're still there and you're not light please be light the light shineth in darkness the salt is for seasoning is not for staying in a box okay don't Keep on staying in a box. And if you still don't know the gospel out there, the gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. And it's all about understanding how that Christ died for our sins. He was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Five things that you have to do to be saved. One, you have to understand that you're lost. Understand that you're lost. Hear the gospel, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. 
understand the gospel, okay? Don't just hear and not understand because believing is from the heart, okay? Not from your mind. And then believe the gospel and then confess it out to God what you believe. You only confess what you know. That's why the sinner's prayer does not save. Only believing, understanding, and confessing what you know is what saves you. God bless you and have a blessed time.